curses. That's what we're talking about here today. That's the intro. That's my joke. Howdy. My name is Nonat, and Pathfinder 2E's Game Mastery Guide has a bunch of really useful stuff in it that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. The thing we're talking about here today is curses. Did you know that in the Game Mastery Guide, there is a bunch of different curses for all different level ranges that you can apply to your players to make them suffer? Along with just making different things harder, curses can make the game really interesting because there's a lot of different ways to use them. Use them in place of traps to protect artifacts. Even putting them onto equipment to curse that equipment can be really fun. Give your players a really powerful item, but a detrimental curse attached to it. Curses are underutilized in the Pathfinder 2E system, and I think they are incredibly fun to mess around with. So let's talk about all of the curses available in the Game Mastery Guide, and maybe you'll get some inspiration to use them in your game, or even come up with your own. But I'm afraid both you and I have already been afflicted by a curse. The curse of the generous sponsor, Roll for Combat. You see, we've already failed our saving throws, which means you're gonna need to click the link in the description to check out the RPG Superstar 2021 contest. This is a contest that is being run by Roll for Combat and endorsed by Paizo themselves, where you can enter up to three unique creatures, stat them out using their monster creation tool, and after being analyzed by professional game designers, might be featured in next year's Battle Zoo Bestiary. Over 100 entries will be chosen as winners and receive their share of a cash prize, as well as a ranking from bronze, silver, gold, platinum, or maybe even the grand prize. If you want to find some inspiration or just see the kind of creatures that were made last year, check out the link in the description as well to the Battle Zoo Bestiary released this year. It is available for purchase right now. You can order a physical copy or you can just purchase the PDF and get instant access to it right on your device. Check it out. You can see who made all the creatures, how they look, use that for inspiration and create your own masterpiece. There is a theme this year as well, which is strange and weird. So if you're going to create a creature, make sure it's strange and weird. Thank you so much to Roll for Combat for sponsoring the channel. Link in the description to the RPG Superstar Contest. Be sure to enter. I'm entering, and I'm gonna win. I mean, like a hundred plus people are gonna win, but I'm gonna be one of them. This is gonna be really awkward if I'm not. Let's let's talk about curses. Starting off with the Curse of Nightmares. This is a level two curse, and if you fail the DC 16 will saving throw, you suffer from bad nightmares so bad every night that you require 12 hours of rest instead of just 8 to avoid exhaustion. This just sounds like my life. If you only sleep for 8 hours, you do become fatigued. You can still do your daily preparations. If you're a wizard, you can prepare your spells, but you are going to be fatigued, which is a minus 1 to armor class and minus 1 to all saving throws, which is rough. This, in a long-form, not-time-intensive campaign, won't do too much. But if you use this in a campaign where the players need to keep going and finding time to rest is rough, finding 12 hours to sleep every day is gonna be tough, and you might force the character afflicted by this curse to play fatigued if they can't figure something out. It's a lot of fun, it's a very minor effect, but it's also very cool. You can flavor the nightmares and tell them exactly what they're fearing. Theft of Thought is level three. Should you fail the DC 18 will save, you might not even realize exactly what kind of curse has afflicted you, as it does nothing instantly. However, the very next skill check you use, your proficiency will drop by one rank until you remove the curse. So if you trigger the Theft of Thought curse, fail the DC 18 will save, and roll Arcana, which you're expert in, congratulations, now you are trained in Arcana until you dispel the curse. This only affects skills in which you are already trained or better, so if you use an untrained skill, nothing will happen. But that's brutal. Especially if you're not a rogue, losing one of your very few skill increases is pretty rough. 
But this is the kind of curse that could be a lot of fun to play with. If you put this on something like a suit of armor or a weapon, and the curse is only active while they have that item on them, that can be that really cool drawback, you know? They're wielding their greatsword, which deals an extra D8 electric damage, but it reduces their proficiency in acrobatics while they hold it. Is that worth it? That's up to the player. Slayer's Haunt at level 4 is interesting. If you fail the DC 19 will save, then all creatures, including your allies, appear to be creatures you have killed and slain in the past, bearing all of the wounds you inflicted upon them. If you decapitated a bear in the forest, then you're fighting a random bandit, that bandit might look like a headless bear to you. If you are going to take any action that requires knowing what your target is, for example, if you are going to recall knowledge against that bandit, you first need to make another will save against the DC of Slayer's Haunt to see through the illusion and actually know what you're fighting. Additionally, if you crit fail this will save, you become frightened one. This isn't the worst curse, but it is a good way to shut down something like a recall knowledge ranger or investigator, which can be really, really rough and a cool thing. I don't think this would be fun for a long period of time, as that just forces them to make so many will saves every time they recall knowledge, but for a session or two, that could really get in the way and that can make things interesting. Coward's Roots, level five with a DC 20 will save, if you are ever afflicted by the frightened condition, then you must make a choice at the start of every single turn. You are either immobilized or you are fleeing for the entire turn. That's a brutal one. Like sure, you have to be frightened for this to take effect, but you can't get closer to any source that frightened you as long as you have this curse. This just exemplifies the frightened condition, and you're either stuck in place or you are walking away. There is no in-between. This isn't so bad for something like, say, a wizard or a ranged attacker, but put this on a champion or a fighter or a monk? Yeah, that's rough. Curse of the Ravenous is okay. It's not that exciting, but it is very fun from a roleplay perspective. With a DC 20, Fortitude save, if you fail your saving throw against this curse, you are permanently afflicted by a hunger that will never go away so long as the curse exists upon you. You will always be starving, no matter how much you eat. Starving is a little bit scary. Granted, at level 5 up, it's not going to be that bad, but basically, if you are starving, you take one point of damage every day, and you cannot be healed. So effectively, you lose a hit point, and your max HP goes down by one point every single day, which again, if you're level five, you've probably got 50 plus hit points, so you're gonna be fine for a while, and you get another saving throw against this at the start of each week, but that is kind of scary. If you fail the saving throw, and you have no way to get rid of this curse, you know that over the next seven days, you're gonna lose seven max hit points and take seven damage. It's pretty rough. Additionally, you are going to be fatigued by this because you are starving. Wizard's Ward is a really fun curse. It's meant to be put on a book, typically a spell book, but I think you could get away with putting this on any kind of object. If that object is damaged or destroyed, the destroyer of it makes a DC 22 will save and on a fail takes 5d6 damage of the same damage type they dealt it. If you burn the cursed book, you'll take 5d6 fire damage. And this damage also lowers your max HP. This specific damage cannot be healed so long as the curse persists, but there is a way out of it. If you fix the object you destroyed, it ends the curse. So if you break a cursed vase with a fireball and you become burned, you lose that hit points permanently. But if you take like two weeks and glue the vase back together, the curse will end. <laughs> this is a really cool one. I think this is a fun one to put not on a book. If you really want to be an awful person and really just ruin your player's day, put this on some constructs. Put some lower level constructs that your party can easily defeat. Put that in front of something you want to protect. And then when they destroy the construct, the wizard's ward goes off and they lose permanent hit points either until they dispel the curse or repair the construct.
Oath of the Flesh is just cool and metal. For a DC 23 fortitude save, if you fail, you suffer this curse. Now this curse does nothing right away. However, every time you make a promise of any magnitude to anybody, a symbol appears somewhere on your body. If at any point you break that promise, the symbol rips open and you take 3d6 slashing damage. And of course, as we've come to expect, that damage cannot be healed until you remove the curse. So every time you break a promise, your max HP is reducing by 3d6. Brutal. I love it. I just love that. Yeah. I just love that you can give this to like a champion. They'll be like, I can do that. I don't break my promises. And then a month later, they promise to protect an NPC. That NPC ends up dying and their wound rips open just because they failed. Not because they broke it on purpose, but because they failed. I think it's super cool. Cell Sword's folly on something like a fighter can easily TPK a party. If this is put on someone who's not that powerful in combat, it might not be a big deal. Let me explain. For a DC 26 will save, if you fail, then as long as you are afflicted by this curse, when you roll initiative, you get to make another will save against the same DC. If you fail, you are confused for the first round of combat. This means, friend or foe, you attack the closest creature to you. If the fighter and the wizard are hanging out and you get ambushed and the fighter has the cell sword's folly and fails his will save, boy is he taking his great sword and plunging it into the wizard. On the upside, this basically gives you two chances. If you succeed either the first or the second will save, it does remove cell sword's folly. Curse of Slumber is interesting. You make a DC 28 fortitude save and on a fail, you fall asleep for one round. However, to everyone else, you appear to be dead. You seem cold, you are not moving, you don't appear to be breathing, you just seem deceased. And only a DC 30 medicine check will let them know you are still alive. If you crit fail your saving throw against Curse of Slumber, this is permanent until the curse is removed. Now, luckily, taking damage of any kind gives you another saving throw. So even if you crit fail, if somebody keeps punching you in the gut enough for one or two points of damage, you will eventually wake up. But in the middle of combat, this can be rough. This leads me to an interesting idea of don't be afraid to give your bad guys curses, GMs, especially big bosses if they're like magic users. Don't be afraid to basically turn these curses into a spell. Curse of Slumber would be a really cool spell to cast on someone, and it's incapacitation, so you can't pull this out at like level 20, but cast this on your level 10 character, knock them out cold, and then, you know, they have to wake back up. Just use the same DC, make it a two action spell, boom. Your bad guy can now do something really interesting. Reviling Earth is very different, as this does not curse a character, but rather a massive area. This can curse an entire town if the caster is strong enough. Basically, when someone enters the cursed area, they make a DC 30 fortitude save, and if they fail, they are doomed one, or doomed two on a critical failure. And doomed only goes down by one point after a long night's rest, so if you are just doomed two from entering a place, you're doomed for basically at least two days. That's really rough and a really cool way to add stakes to a dungeon. I've actually done this in the past, where upon entering the dungeon, the party was afflicted by Doomed 2, which means you are now dead at Dying 2 instead of Dying 4. Suddenly, falling unconscious at all becomes a lot more scary. Spirit Anchor is another good one for roleplay, or even an interesting way to keep a player in the campaign. You make a DC 31 fortitude save, and if you fail, you are afflicted by the Spirit Anchor curse. You are not allowed to move on. If you die, you become a ghost. You are stuck on the material plane, 
as a ghost. Now you can play into this as though that ghost ends up being controlled by a necromancer or something and becomes angry and attacks the party. Or if you really want to get interesting, you can let the player keep playing after they died as a ghost. You'll probably need to homebrew some stuff because as of this video, we don't have a ghost or spirit ancestry yet. But hey, I think you gotta have a lot of fun with that. I bet you could mostly use the Dampier one and get away with it. I like it. Unending Thirst is a way worse version of Curse of the Ravenous. Rather than being unable to sate your hunger, you are unable to sate your thirst. Rather than just taking one damage per day, you take 1d4 damage per day, which cannot be healed until you remove the curse. But what makes this one actually not quite as scary to me is that you get a new saving throw every day. If you afflict this on a low level character, it is a level 15 curse. But I think if you put this on like a level seven or eight character, that would get fascinating. Because the chances of them making a DC 32 fort save is pretty low. And so that could start an interesting side quest to try to save the life of your party member before they literally dry up and die. If a level seven or eight character has about 80 hit points, that would give them about, you know, 1d4 average of 2, that still gives them about a month, give or take, their luck to survive before they completely dry out. So that would be a really interesting quest to try to help them. And being a level 15 curse, dispelling this would be really tough. You would need at least, I think, a level 7 remove curse spell, which would be tough to come by depending on where they are in the world. Reviled of nature is just kind of hilarious. You curse a character to be abhorred by nature. Every time they encounter a wild animal, no, just an animal, even a domesticated dog, <laughs> the animal makes a will save against the DC 38 curse saving throw. You don't make it, they do. On a failed save, they will attack you and fight to the death. This is terrifying. If you're just a nice little level 18 druid and you walk into town, these two level one dogs are gonna fail their will save. They're gonna try to kill you. Like sure, they're not gonna be able to hit you and there's no way you can hit them back. You'll kill them. That just leads to these really awkward role plays. And I love the idea of the character just with like four or five dogs just like biting their armor. Like you know how you see a dog bite something and then just like dragged away by it? And it just doesn't let go. It's basically that. But this could also get worse because there are some high level animals. Though I don't think there are any animals level 18 or higher. So again, this is another interesting high level curse to give to a low level character. Be careful, but when a curse like this doesn't have direct damage numbers or anything like that, you can usually feel free to use it on lower level characters. Just remember that they probably won't be able to remove the curse. So be careful, but don't be afraid to take that risk and afflict a low-level character with a high-level curse as long as it's not going to instantly kill them. Thieves Retribution is brutal and hilarious. It is a DC 39 fortitude save. If you fail, you are afflicted by Thief's Retribution. Every time you steal something, you lose something of greater monetary value. If you have a diamond in your pocket and you steal uh, 50 gold out of someone's purse, that diamond vanishes. You can't get it back, it is whisked away and teleported completely gone. There's no finding it again. And let's say, oh, you're big brain. You remove everything. You know, you're really kind of weird. You, you strip down naked, you have nothing on you, and then you steal the gold. One of your limbs is ripped away from you to be gone forever. You take 10d6 slashing damage, the limb is gone forever, and that 10d6 damage cannot be healed until you remove the curse. You can't even restore the limb with a regenerate spell if you are still afflicted by this curse. Until you remove it, your limb is gone, every item that was taken from you is gone. I love this curse. GMs, if you're having a thief who's just stealing everything from everybody and is just being a big dingle weasel, Thief's Retribution. Sword of Anathema is so cool. You are marked as an enemy of a specific deity when you are afflicted by this curse. If it's Saren Ray, then all worshippers of Saren Ray will see you as a threat 
and you gain a weakness 10 to damage dealt by worshippers of that deity. Now this doesn't mean they'll attack you on sight, but it does mean that they will not want anything to do with you, they'll probably ask you to leave, and if you don't, then they'll attack you. This would be really cool if you're having a campaign against like Rovagug or any of the big evil deities that mark the party with the Sword of Anathema curse and their worshippers now deal bonus damage against them. That could be a lot of fun, really cool. This is another one that, yes, it's a level 20 curse, but at the end of the day, it just adds 10 damage to the damage dealt. So if your characters are like level 10 or so, I think you could get away with applying this curse, and especially if the players are aware the curse exists, that could add for some interesting strategy. You know, normally the fighter's the front line, but if the fighter's the one who is suffering from sort of anathema, and you're fighting Rovagug's cultists, maybe the fighter should stay back and shoot arrows, rather than trying to fight up front and get swarmed by the bonus damage. Really cool curse. Grave Curse is kind of just disturbing, and you could afflict a character with this without them ever knowing, and they just have to figure out what's going on. This is typically afflicted to someone when they steal from a grave or a tomb, and the level of the curse varies. Typically, it's going to be higher the more important the grave or tomb was that they stole from. Every night when trying to sleep, the player must make a flat DC 15 check. If they fail, then incorporeal undead spirits will appear around them, jostle them, push them. They're not dealing damage, they're not harming them, they're just annoying them so that they do not get a full night's rest. Which means you only have a 1 in 4 chance of actually sleeping soundly while afflicted by this curse. Also, whenever you enter a graveyard, there is no save for this. A random corpse near you in the graveyard will animate as a skeleton or a zombie, crawl out of the ground, and attack you. This is really only going to be a big deal if the character is level like 2 or 3 and the zombie can actually hurt them. But from a roleplay perspective, this can do a lot. If the cleric is suffering from the grave curse and they're going to pay respects to someone, and that someone animates as a skeleton and attacks the cleric, that's going to look real bad on the cleric of Saren Ray and is probably going to be a little bit offensive to, you know, the family of the dead guy who asked you to come bury him. Both the spirits and the zombies are only temporary. Whether you avoid the attacks or you kill them or anything like that, typically after a few moments, they either vanish if they were a spirit or collapse into a corpse again as a zombie or skeleton. And those are just the curses, just sort of standalone in the Game Mastery Guide. I'm not even mentioning all of the cursed items that are found in the Game Mastery Guide that you can very easily study, rip the effect off of, and put onto something else. There's so much fun to be had with curses. Obviously, don't use them to harass your players, but use them to accentuate the story, add stakes, or maybe give a powerful item a drawback. There's a lot of fun to be had with curses. If you want, I'll do a video on the cursed items as well. They're super cool and I've used them in the past and I would love to talk about them. But that is where I'm going to call it. So let me know down in the comments, have you used any of these curses? Have you been afflicted by any of these curses? Uh, how did that all play out from you? I love to hear your stories. I know I say this all the time, but I mean it. I love reading your stories in the comments. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel, for supporting me, and helping me pay my rent and buy food every day. I also want to thank Roll for Combat for doing very much the same. Don't forget to check out their RPG Superstar 2021 competition in the description using the link in there. The deadline is December 7th, so you've only got about two and a half weeks left to submit your monsters. Don't let the time get away from you. I know what procrastination is like. It's a problem. But that's it for me. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.